Good day, everybody. This is Kevin Hogan, author of uh, 24 books, including The Psychology of Persuasion and The Science of Influence. They've been translated into 43 languages all around the world. Thank you for reading and uh, making that possible. It still boggles my mind every single day. Millions of copies, and it's, it's all because of you. Physical priming. I think physical priming is one of the coolest things in the world. Have you ever watched The Big Bang Theory? In The Big Bang Theory, the lead character, his name is Sheldon, and Sheldon is a very, um, he's a, he's a uh, very obsessive, compulsive, uh, you could almost uh, say crazy, uh, guy. And uh, he's got his own spot, and he sits in his own spot, but he's learning all the things that make social life work. So for example, Sheldon learned one day that if you get somebody a warm beverage when they're feeling sad, they'll feel better. And you know what? The writers of the Big Bang Theory are actually brilliant because they hire scientists to work for the show and give input as to what is real in the world, like what really works. And so this is actually true. If you give somebody a nice cold diet Pepsi, or if you give somebody a nice cold glass of water instead of a nice warm glass of water, or instead of a nice warm cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee, as the temperature goes down, so does the probability that the person will say yes. This is pretty amazing. And the, the drama behind this is, is that the distinctions between the colder the drink and the hotter the drink are really huge. The, the, uh, the probability the person is going to say yes with a warm drink in their hand increases dramatically. Is this every single person on, on the planet Earth? Probably not. Okay, I know I like cool drinks, but I also know if I got ginger, peach tea, or coffee, I'm probably doing fine too. So it's interesting. So what I want you to do is make sure you have warm beverages available for your clients, your customers, your girlfriend, the person that you care about, and feel free to bring them that cup of tea, that cup of coffee, whatever it is, especially if it's a warm beverage, previous to their answering your request that you're going to ask, okay? But this isn't the only physical priming that's out there. There's lots of cool physical primes. Um, one of them I see over here is uh, a fascinating study was done where jurors, jurors in a criminal trial, you know, the guys who make up the decision, the women who make up the decision as to whether the person's gonna go to jail or not. If the jurors go to the bathroom right before they, uh, they give their verdict and they wash their hands, the jurors that wash their hands want a less severe verdict. Let's say that one more time because it's ridiculous. The jurors, yeah, the jurors who wash their hands before they decide yes, no, severe, not so severe, punish, don't punish so bad, let them off with a warning, you know, one of those kind of things. If they wash their hands and they clean themselves before they go back in, and make their decision, they're less likely to have a severe verdict. That's pretty huge. And it turns out that this works in all aspects of life. So if you happen to catch someone coming out of the restroom and you see their hands nice and clean with a few dabs of water there, and it's still, you know, they're, they're, they've just washed their hands, this is a really good time. If you're gonna give a piece of bad news, this is the time to give the piece of bad news. Like, honey, I, I got a scratch in the car. It's a big scratch. You know, sorry, I'm really sorry, right? This is when you do it because you probably won't get killed in this case. All right, this is an example. All right, um, another really cool one is uh, voters are more likely to excuse polish, uh, politicians' misdemeanors who are going to the ballot box if they wash their hands. Okay, so in other words, here you're going to here you're going to go vote, right? You're going to vote Trump. You're going to vote Clinton. You're going to vote whoever the next people in the next election are. I don't care. It's all ridiculous nowadays, but. Somebody's going to get elected, and the people who wash their hands, the people who wash their hands, they're going to be the people who are more likely to forgive all of the things that the people with the signs in their hands protesting person A or person B or whatever are going to say. So if the person is protesting away, you see the protest, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. And then they go wash their hands. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, he's not such a bad guy or she's not such a bad girl. You know, what the heck, let's go. We'll go ahead and vote for him anyway. Get people to wash their hands, okay? Um, another cool one, yeah, this is such a great one, is that if you walk into somebody's office and 
you're going to be talking to them, you might as well have a couple of things with you that you can offer the person. Um, one thing that you can offer people is something heavy, like a book or a clipboard or um, something along those lines. And the advantage of having just a couple of things in your hand when you meet somebody is really huge. Because as soon as you put a heavy clipboard into somebody's hands, the probability of them saying yes with a heavy clipboard versus a light clipboard increases dramatically. Now think about that. If, if you're going to be holding a meeting and you have this like completely high, well, say there's no clipboard at all. Say that you just say, hey, if you want to say yes, raise your hand. They raise their hand. No, they don't raise their hand. People hate raising their hand. They're always like, oh, I'll wait until 14 other people raise their hand and then I'll raise my hand. Right. But if you get the clipboard and it's heavy, when people have a heavy clipboard in their hand, they tend to say yes. When it's light or no clipboard, they tend to say no. This makes no sense whatsoever to a lot of people, but really it's just about the gravity of the situation means yes, this requires my attention and I must be important if I have this heavy clipboard in my hands. Now, other physical primes. I've got uh, two more for you. The one of them you've heard before, one of them, I'm sure you know this, that um, when people wear a white robe, you know, like a doctor wears, and then they go in front of a television camera or in front of an audience, people are more likely to listen to this person as a doctor when he's communicating information about health than if somebody comes out without the white uniform on, the white, not the white uniform, but the white robe, right? And this is interesting because when you go to your doctor's office, my doctor to this day, He's 65 years old, I bet, 70 maybe, and he still wears a white robe. Even though you don't need to wear a white robe, there's nothing that's going to happen in that office that's that crazy, but he wears the white doctor's robes and the stethoscope, even though doctors don't use the stethoscope anymore. Cool? Okay. So that's neat. And if you put yourself in the position of being the authority, what does the authority wear in this situation? What do they look like in this situation? you're going to get a lot more yeses. And the other really cool one was um, a lot of times I'm, I'm fascinated by how men and women get hired or not hired or whether they hear yes or whether they hear no. And it turns out that there is um, a sort of a subconscious inequality that happens um, not with men to women, but with women to women. Women are less likely to hire a woman who dresses feminine. And by feminine, I mean maybe wearing a dress, uh, maybe having some, you know, a lot of makeup on or hair just done, for example. Much women are less likely to hire women, but they're more likely to hire that same exact woman if she's dressed more masculine with a nice blazer and if she's got a pantsuit on and dressed like that. And as far as men hiring women, it makes almost no difference, but women hiring women, you're going to get the job if you dress masculine. Physical priming is cool. Watch for these seven things this week and I will talk to you here next time.